We are broadcasting to you live from Long Acres, Lusaka, Zambia. This is Millennium TV, your first business and financial news channel. It's now time for farming today, where we'll be talking to Mr. Isaac Sikazo, the CEO of Alpha Poultry Zambia. Now, it is a continuation from last week where we were talking about how to manage broiler chickens. Thank you so much and welcome to the program. Thank you so much and thank you to Millennium TV for inviting me always. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's dive straight in. Uh, give us a brief summary on how one can raise broiler chickens in Zambia. Um, it's, uh, it's very simple, though a lot of people think it's something that is difficult, but uh, raising broiler chickens in Zambia is very simple. Or should I say raising chickens in Zambia is simple. Anyway, actually, uh, one of the things that we need to understand is just need to get to a point where you understand the temperatures and then also be able to understand this. Apart from the temperature, also understand the seasons. There are certain seasons like uh, during this rain season. Right now, a lot of people have been complaining that ch their chickens are not growing basically because a bird does not, com does not perform when it's, at its, when it's not at its comfort zone. Uh, just when I was coming to the studio, somebody sent me some pictures of beds that have not been growing and they've given them um, they've given more than enough what they were supposed to eat but they're not growing the way they're supposed to grow so basically you realize that he might what well, that person might do everything but then the only thing that they've not understood is that a bed can only perform at its comfort zone so he's giving them the feeds the antibiotics and everything but if, if the chickens eat the feed and then still they're in the pot that is cold, instead of that feed working in terms of uh, producing the meat, that feed will be eaten and then it begins to produce temperature for the chicken. Mm, okay. Yeah. Then the, uh, so it's, it's basically just that understanding that we, one needs to have. Okay. Which is more profitable though, layers or broilers? Mm. Which one is profitable? Layers or broilers? Um, you realize that um, both of them are profitable, both of them, but then there's another one that actually requires, the other one requires a lot of money. So here's what I do. Most of the times, the uh, clients that have been coming to us and saying, I want to get into layers. Do you realize that uh, you have to feed your chicks when you're keeping layers? There's actually, the types of layers is uh, Lumen Brown and Issa Brown. So these same chickens, you realize that when you get them as day olds, you have to keep them for close to about five months, about 20, let me say 19 weeks for them to get to point of lay. And then imagine if you've not done your research well, you realize that before the chickens get to point of lay, you have failed mm. in, in terms of feeding. So this is what I've always been telling our clients, one of the things that you need to do is, let's say you want to get into, and by the way, if you're keeping layers and then you want to start with 100, they will not make sense. Because you'll be here waiting for about 19 weeks and you know how many trays you'll be waiting for? Mm. For three trays every day. Mm. So the question is, what are you doing then? So usually we prefer and advise people to say, Layers usually make sense if you're dealing with bigger numbers. Okay. Let's say you're keeping your target is to have about, uh, let's say, 100 trays a day. Then do 3,500 layers. So get them, at, get them as chicks, keep them, but always have a backup on your side. Mm -hmm. Where maybe you're doing broilers, and then whatever profits you get from the broilers, you're feeding the layers. Okay. So that way, if you do it that way, it will be able to make sense. Then for broilers, for broilers... It's money that you make every after six weeks. Mm -hmm. So it all depends with the way you're looking at it. But they both make money. Currently, an egg is selling a two kwacha one. And then imagine if um, you're picking 1,000 eggs every day. It means to say in terms of cash, you've got 2,000 every day. But then for you to get to a place where you're making that 2,000 every day, do you realize that a person had to wait for almost 22 weeks for them to get to point of length? Mm -hmm. Somebody had to wait for for about five months for them to start picking those eggs mm -hmm. so sometimes don't just get excited and say i've got a friend who's picking about 1000 eggs every day do you know how much how much they've spent for the past five months so those are things that we look at so basically it all depends with what your interest is but please hear it from me you can make money from broilers you can also make money from um, from layers they are both profitable actually with um, with the way the issue of um, of these 
coronavirus is and all, definitely you notice that uh, weddings had reduced basically not just weddings but different events mm -hmm. so chickens people actually anticipated to say people will not eat as much as chickens as they did mm -hmm. but guess what people were still eating chickens when you when you talk about probably there's somebody out there who wants to be wants to keep layers and they're somehow discouraged you realize that a, uh, an egg or a ch poultry is actually the cheapest meal because guess what even an egg is two quarters even if an egg is two kwacha currently, you can literally have a ten kwacha and have a meal. Buy two eggs or one to sell two pimis and you have a meal from poultry, mm -hmm. from eggs. Mm -hmm. But then from a ten kwacha you won't buy, you won't buy a full chicken. Yes. So basically it's it's let me say poultry in general makes sense. Poultry in general. Be it layers, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Earlier you talked about how a chickens underperform if they're not in their in their comfort zone. Could you elaborate more on how how sensitive a chicken is when it comes to environmental changes? Uh, here is one thing that uh, we usually don't take note, and uh, we th we think as farmers we think just because I've given them feed, I've given them water, I've given them this, then they're okay. Here is what happens: um, if the chickens there are some diseases. Let's say, do you know the reason why we put, uh, we put chicken wire around the poultry? Mm. A normal bed, like a normal free-range bed, just a bed. Can you only, the same bed that, this, as small as it is, if it enters your poultry, it carries a disease called Newcastle. Mm -hmm. So when they enter in your poultry, or if you allow them to enter into your poultry, they, they, they would give Newcastle to the chickens because basically Newcastle is, is harbored in, in the free-range beds. Okay. Yeah. So how does a chicken get affected with uh, environmental changes and all? So here's the thing. According to season, let's say, I gave an example to say, during this period of time, it's raining. And then you realize that a lot of people have been complaining to say their chickens are not growing the way they're supposed to grow. Mm -hmm. Basically, they've not understood that aspect of temperature changes. Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, this chicken is eating, instead of it gaining weight, it begins to produce it begins to produce temperature for mm -hmm. it to be alive. So then the other, is, the other thing is there's a period of time, like during this period of time, we have, we have, um, we have, we have, we have diseases like uh, coryza. We have diseases like uh, fowl pox. So coryza is that disease that uh, affects the chickens. You find that here is a chicken. It has, uh, it has whitey stuff and probably the eye can't even open. So all those come because of changes in the environment. And it's, it's, it's according to season. Then there's a period of time where sometimes there's too much wind, like mm. in August. In and August, yes. yes. So you realize that during that period of time, a lot of people will be complaining with issues of Newcastle and all. So there, there are some diseases that are actually airborne, some are waterborne and all that. So, but all in all, if you make sure that your biosecurity levels at the farm or at the house where you're at the backyard, backyard where you're keeping those, those beds, if it's neat and clean, you will not be able to have any problem. But believe you me, environmental changes or probably the environment where the beds are has got everything to do with the success of your poultry. Okay. What stage of a chicken's life is you know, the most critical that, that, that needs to, uh, a lot of attention? Um, you see, um, there's a stage, once when an egg hatch, well, mm -hmm. let me just put it this way, just to make somebody out there understand. I'll start explaining from, I'll start, I'll start explaining from an egg. Mm -hmm. An egg is laid at a temperature uh, which is uh, 42 degrees. Then that egg is put to cool. Once when that egg is put and, it's, and the egg has cooled, you now put it in the incubator. That is for commercial levels and all. Or maybe an, a chicken will start sitting on it and all, whatever. So now, that chicken, the temperature for, for incubation is 32 degrees. Sorry, 38, 37.5 to 38 degrees. Then that way incubation would have started. Then after a chick, after a chick hatches after 21 days, then what will happen is, that chicken needs to be subjected to temperature. So imagine you get 100 chicks from wherever, maybe hybrid, Ross, or anywhere, or maybe mm. you get chicks from us anywhere. You realize that those chicks do not have the hen. 
So you as a poultry farmer, you are the hen. Mm. How best can I take care of these birds? So you need to understand that there is that process, the most critical point or mm. time of a chicken. Is that time when you notice that the hen has got chicks and it's keeping them under its wings. That process is what we call brooding. Okay. So the first, the most critical times of a chick is the first 14 days of its life. So the first 14 days, the chicken needs temperature. The chicken needs a, a, a bit high temperature, a, a little bit more high. So basically the temperature that the chick will need between, 14, between a day old to 14 days, during the cold season, that chick will need 32 degrees. Sorry, during the hot season, the chicken will need 20, 32 degrees. Okay. During the cold season, let's say in June or maybe during, the, during the, the rain season like we are right now, as long as it's cold, the temperature is supposed to be 32 degrees to 35. Anything below that, they begin to die. Okay. So basically, that's what we, we, we need. So that process of which we provide temperature to that chick that is growing is called brooding. So that's the most critical period of time of a chick. And just making sure that they are not dying, balancing up, making sure that they grow so that somebody out there can be able to have a meal. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit more about the feed that goes into, you know, uh, uh, broiler chickens. There are different stage stages and different feeds that are given given to, 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 to chickens. Um, the different stages of, um, of feeds, definitely. We, we can't really mention the, the, the brands and everything. There are a lot out there. Okay. But then one of the things that we've, uh, we've always advised, and I hope uh, we're going to say this again, we've, we've said it again and again, a day-old chick, from a day-old, from a day-old, the moment that the chick hatches, this is what we've been telling our clients. Mm -hmm. The moment the chick hatches, like from day one to 21 days, you give them starter. Okay. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of brands out there, and then even the feeding is different according to the way they want their feed, the, 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 the feed to be used according to the way they've formulated it. But usually we always tell our clients, a chicken is a chicken and it needs the best care. So from day one to day number 21, you give them starter. And the amount of starter that you give to one chicken is 1.2 kg. Okay. Then from 21 to 35 days, we give them grower. So one chick will eat 1.2 kg of starter. Then grower, one chick will eat 1.4 kg. Grower, it will eat 1.4 kg. Finisher, so from 21 to 35 days. Then finisher, so finisher is basically a withdrawal feed. Mm -hmm. It will begin to withdraw whatever chemicals that this chicken has eaten its whole life, whatever chemicals it has consumed. So in finisher, basically, there are no chemicals. There's literally no methanine. Probably there are other companies that will put methanine and lysine and all. So methanine is a growth, methanine is a growth promoter. Lysine is a fattener. So in, uh, in finisher, we do not put that. So it begins to withdraw the chemicals. Okay. From the feed. So the amount of feed that one chick will eat is also, f for, st for finisher, is also 1.2. So you will realize that uh, for, for one chicken, from day old to point of sale, one chicken will eat 1.2, sorry, will eat 3.8 kg of feed. So when it eats 3.8 kg of feed, at the end of the day, that chicken should be able to give you, in terms of meat, it should be able to give you 2 kg plus. Okay. The other thing that we need to take note, we've said this before and we'll say it again, is spacing. So you make sure that, um, understand that per square meter of space will give you 28 kg of meat. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, it means to say, if I put uh, 10 chickens per square meter, I'll just divide 28 kg divided by 10. So one chicken is going to weigh how many kg? 2.8. 2.8. If I put 20 chickens per square meter, one chicken is going to weigh how many kg? 1.4. So no matter how much you fed your chickens, spacing, environment is also very important. There are times where you keep on feeding your chickens, you're feeding them well, you're taking care of them well, but as long as the spacing is, is not 
the space is not enough. The mm -hmm. chickens will not be able to perform. Remember where I said the chicken will only perform at its comfort zone, only at its comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break. We will be back shortly, and we will continue with Mr. Isaac Sakazo, CEO of Alpha Poultry Zambia, here on Farming Today. You're still on Millennium TV. It is Farming Today. We are talking to Mr. Isaac Sakaswe, the CEO of Alpha uh, Alpha Poultry Zambia. Now, before the break, we, you you told us uh, you, you you taught us how um, the chickens should have the starter, the grower, the front, the finisher, and that and the cages that a, a, a chicken should eat. Is is it possible for a chicken to eat itself to death? Is it possible for a chicken to eat itself to death? I would say yes and a no. Okay. Uh, because, you know, people have got uh, this saying that chickens eat too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, they do not. Okay. They need a bit of control. Just today, again, somebody sent uh, a pic. I think you've noticed that sometimes people will be complaining to say, I found chickens have flipped. Mm -hmm. I don't know probably if you've never, if you have ex ever experienced yes, yes, that. Yes. So chickens will flip, the legs will be up, and then they'll be, they'll face like this. So the, the legs will be up, like they'll f die facing up. Mm -hmm. So once when you notice that in poultry, be able to realize to say, this chicken has died because of too much eating. Okay. So... Once when a chicken eats too much, or when they're eating too much, and you're, you can't, you're not controlling them, the levels of methanine and lysine begins to cause fat on the heart. So okay. by the way, these other parts of a chicken, have you noticed that you can get a very big broiler chicken, but then the heart is small? Mm -hmm. So the heart of a chicken does not grow according to the feed. The heart grows at a normal pace. Okay. So hence, when the chicken eats too much, it begins to, it will get to a point where it accumulates a lot of fat. And then once that happens, they die of a cardiac arrest. Okay. So that is a point where I would say the chicken can eat itself it's to, to death. death. Mm -hmm. So they will continue, they will, they will literally be eating and all. And then you will notice that usually, like the one that sent a pic today, the chicken literally flipped close to the water. Okay. And sometimes it will flip close to the feeder and the legs are lifted up. So you will not say, okay, this chicken has died because of too much levels of lysine and methanine on the heart. So if you do a post-mortem, you realize that that chicken has got fat on the heart. Okay. So there are instances, there, there are situations like that where you notice that, okay, this chicken has died because of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. How, when it comes to, when you have a lot of chickens, say, in your, in, in your um, where you keep them, how do you, um, how can one manage to, 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 to sort of balance and give them, and because you're, I mean, you're not going to be giving one chicken per plate, you know, it's different with humans, you can give it, okay, this is your plate, just, yeah. but they're all just going to be eating. So how do you make sure that the chickens eat the correct type, the correct amount of food? How do you make sure that uh, the chickens eat the correct amount of feed? Mm -hmm. Here's what we do. Like, for example, um, 100 chickens. We're talking about, let's say, let's put it 1,000 chickens. Okay. 1,000 chickens, and if one chick is eating 1.2 kg of starter, 
for the 1,000 chicks, how many cages do we need? We need 1,200 okay. feed Yes. in terms of cages. So when we divide that, you realize that we have... Uh, so for 10 bags, 10 bags is 500. So we realize that we need about 22, 24 bags of feed. So those 24 bags of feed, there's a way that we feed. We don't just feed them anyhow. Mm -hmm. So let's say the only way you would tell to say each one has eaten actually the same amount of feed. This, was, this is what we do. Number one, balance up the number of feeders in the poultry. Okay. Okay. Balance up the so number of feeders. For feeder. example, if you have 100 chickens, what would be the balanced amount of feeders? If you have, if you have 100 chickens, for example, it feed, I'll, give, I'll, I'll pick it up from the chicks. Okay. One feeding tray is able to accommodate 100 chicks okay. in terms of feeding for the first maybe four days or so. One feeding tray is for 100 chicks. But then here's what we do. You realize to say, if I put one feeding tray in this poultry, there will be overclouding in here and there will be, there will be an instance where others will feel lazy to move from point A to point B to come and eat. Okay. So what do we do? For me, here's what I've always been advising clients. Why not put two feeders in the poultry? You know that what is recommended is one tray for 100 beds. So don't put 100. So don't put one. Put two. So that even that one which is lazy, it will be close to the feed. Mm -hmm. It will eat. The same with the water. Instead of putting one small drinker, you put two drinkers. So that at the end of the day, it's able to drink water. Then when they grow, literally put four feeders. Okay. Four big feeders. And then you divide them evenly. Okay. You put, you, 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 you put, let's say, one meter you put, you put a drinker, the other meter you put a feeder, mm -hmm. the other meter you put a drinker, the other meter you put a feeder. So that every one meter, that it, in short, a chicken shouldn't move more than one meter without finding feed or water. Okay. So wherever, the, because your chickens are there in the pot not to just sing for each other or probably make noise for you, they are there to grow between a day old to six weeks. Mm -hmm. So you make sure that your feeders are balanced. The other thing that you do, you cannot literally control to say, no, 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 you've eaten too much, stop eating, let your friend eat. You, mm. can't, you can't do that. Mm. You realize that even the way the beds grow, the sizes are different. So those that are bigger, they always have a, they always have a bigger appetite. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that every time when they're eating, when they go on the feeders, they bully the other ones. So every time you realize that when the chicken is going on the feeder, it doesn't go as if it's begging. It pushes, so they also get with the body advantage. Okay. So they'll push the others that are small to make sure that they eat. So what you do then is, those ones that are bigger, when they get to five weeks, you then slaughter them, leaving space for the other ones. Okay. So within a shortest period of time, those ones will literally will pick, pick up. up as well. Okay. Yeah. So okay. basically that's what we do. So the only secret to make sure that they've eaten, let's say if you've calculated 24 bags, make sure you give them 24 bags. When your chickens are dying, mostly when it comes to four weeks and above, four weeks plus, that's when they begin to flip. So how do you control that then? What you do is you make sure, let's say for example, every hundred, of, every hundred chickens will only need 12 kg of feed per day. Okay. So then what do you do? You divide th 12 by 3. So if you divide 12 by 3, you're basically talking about 4 kg mm -hmm. in the morning, 4 kg during lunch, 4 kg in the night. Okay. So it doesn't matter to say, yeah, imagine feed yourselves in this much food. No, no, no. Do your math. If you want, feed them twice. Give them in the morning and in the evening. So you divide that by two. If you want, you can even give them a little, a little bit more. But the whole idea is, and probably this is a point that our, our, our viewers need to understand out there. Mm -hmm. And that is, it takes six hours for a chicken to digest whatever it has eaten. Okay. So if you give it around six hours, the next time to give it feed is probably around 12, 12, 13. Yes. So you assume to say whatever they ate has been digested. So don't just say, yeah, see the feed, put more feed. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Digestion in a chicken takes place for six hours. Sometimes maybe in the village you realize that they, the maize that it swallowed in the morning is still there. It's still yeah, there. It's still Digestion there, yeah. has not started. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it ate and it swallowed, does that mean to say the food has worked? It has not. Mm. So there's that period of time where the food has to be digested. It has to convert into meat. 
So allow that process to be complete. Okay. So if you keep on forcing the chickens to continue eating and eating, you're not helping them, you're killing them. So the instances where you kill the chicken, probably the ones, the same ones that are flipped, you realize that when you, che when you clean them, when you, che when you check on them, you realize that they still have the feed. So what was the point of you giving the feed more, giving mm -hmm. the chickens more, more, feed. more feed? So it doesn't make sense. Okay. The 1.2 kg that you stated earlier, was that uh, one a chicken needs to eat 1.2 kg of feed per day? Or that was in, uh, from, the, the, the first, from the time, from the day of chicken to the 21 week? To the 21 day? 20, yes. So you, that, you divide that. Okay. Yeah. So whatever amount, let's say, just as I give you an, I give an example, if you have twenty, if you have one thousand beds, mm -hmm. and then you have, uh, you got, uh, you got twenty-four bags of feed. Mm. So those twenty-four bags of starter. And what you're dividing in yes, the twenty-one you days? You feed them for the next twenty-one days. Okay. Okay. So okay. you don't give that amount per day. No. Okay. Okay, noted. It's the whole period of starter. Mm -hmm. That's what the chicken will need to eat. Okay. But from day old to point of sale, one chicken needs to eat 3.8 kg. Okay, all right. Um, how critical is the brooding stage in the health and performance of a chicken's life? It's, uh, it's everything. It's mm. everything that will give you the best results at the end of a day. Okay. Because once you miss, you realize that even the protein levels in starter mm -hmm. are high okay so uh, during that period of time for lack of better term i would i would, I would probably say there was a time when we would see parents cooking mapology soya and oh it's not there nowadays mm -hmm. but they needed to make sure that and all that but basically they are this they wanted their protein levels to be high mm. so during that f the reason why i always encourage people to do starter for the first three weeks the chickens need proper care the chickens need proper care what will determine the result what will determine the best result at the end or at the point when you're selling your chickens it's the same brooding time okay if you make a mistake you continue struggling with weight the rest of your life Mm -hmm. You literally continue struggling with, 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 with weight. They, in short, keeping broilers is not like a marathon. It's mm -hmm. not like I'm running a 100-meter race, race and say, okay, I've remained behind and I'll be able to catch up. Mm -hmm. No. If you're 70 grams today, 10 days later, you're 700 grams behind. Mm -hmm. I hope that makes sense. Yes. So for you to catch up and get to that, you'll probably never get it. Mm. So if this chick is, seven, is 70 grams today and the other ones are 70 grams ahead, you realize that if you decided to feed the chicks more to gain that 70 grams, these other ones will still be able to gain more because even when they're eating the same feed, they're being bullied. So they're even eating less. So the ones that are even eating more are the ones that have got a bigger body. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you realize that when your chickens get to selling, when you get to a point of selling the chickens, you notice that the weights are small. Mm -hmm. So it's not, so it's, it's everything. I would say poultry is the first three weeks. Okay. The brooding time is very important. Mm -hmm. That is what poultry is about. Okay. All right. We have come, uh, sadly, we have come to the end of farming today. Any closing remarks before we let you go? Uh, as I always say, I want um, our viewers to understand to say it's not just a white collar job that can literally put food on your table. Mm -hmm. You can literally do business like this. In fact, somebody said, "The moment I smell the smell of my, the moment I feel the smell of manure, it's like the smell of money." So I would want our viewers out there to realize and understand to say, poultry is something that can be able to literally help you make money. And uh, thanks for being glued to Millennium TV. This is uh, a station that is able to just be able to educate you on entrepreneurship and all that. So please be glued to Millennium, T Millennium TV and follow us on uh, Facebook, Alpha Blaze Poetry from Zambia, for more info. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You are still tuned in to Millennium TV. You've heard it for yourself. Stay tuned right here. We have so much more programming to ensure that you can stabilize financially and learn more about the business world.